Good day everyone, this is DJ Cuts here, coming to you from a random hotel room in Sydney, and today we're checking out the brand new Pioneer XDJ1000 multiplayer. I can't call it a CDJ anymore because it doesn't actually support CDs. USBs, record box compatible, it's got a brand new chart screen. I'm really keen, and I hope you guys are too. Check it out. So what we have here today are three players. We have the Pioneer CDJ800 Mark II, we have the Pioneer XDJ1000, and the Pioneer CDJ2000 Nexus. And the reason I bought all three players is because I think it shows where Pioneer have positioned the XDJ1000 in their product lineup. We've got the entry level, or what was the entry level, player in around 2006, I believe, don't quote me on that, which was the CDJ800 Mark II, and the layout of the XDJ1000 is actually quite similar. If you don't actually look at the screen section here, we've got exactly the same buttons that are along the whole player, and um, we just have just about all the functions implemented on the touchscreen here. So the general layout of the player, as I said, with the 800 Mark II, is very basic. If you've used any of Pioneer CDJs, you'll be able to pick this up and use it. And I will show you in the touchscreen in a second, the touchscreen layout of the controls are actually really similar to this top section of the CDJ2000 Nexus. What connectivity do we have here on the XDJ1000? Well, from a connection point of view, we have a USB, so you can use it in HID mode with Traktor or Serato. We've got the Pioneer Link network cable, so you can use it to link to other CDJs or use it with record box. We have an RCA out, a control cable, and also the AC power cable, obviously. Now, the things that you'll notice, which is the difference between the CDJ2000 Nexus and the XDJ1000, is that there is no digital out port on the back of the XDJ1000. That is about the only connectivity difference. Also, there is one big omission. You won't be fitting CDs in here because there is no CD slot like there is on the front of the 2000 Nexus there. On the bottom of the unit, this is actually a sample unit. Um, yeah, four rubber feet, nothing much is interesting. And uh, also, this is extremely light. You pick it up and it feels like there's nothing in it if you're used to lugging around the CDJ2000 Nexus players. And it does feel uh, a, a little bit flimsy. The build quality definitely doesn't feel as good as the Nexus. And the CDJ800 Mark II is actually much heavier than the XDJ1000. And I think that's just down to the way technology's gone with power supplies and the weight of power supplies. So, this definitely feels a lot more solid than the XDJ1000. However, as I said, feature set on this is absolutely brilliant. So the first thing that you want to do whenever you get one of these new players is to make sure it's running the latest firmware version. Pioneer always fixing bugs with these type of things, so head over to pioneer.com support and just double check that you're running the latest. Once you've got it, you've downloaded the file to USB key. It's really easy to update. You basically plug in the USB. You hold the in loop button and the reloop exit button on the device, and then you turn it on. What it will do is it will come up in a special mode and it will say, sort of awaiting firmware. Oh yeah, version 1.03, done! So obviously the biggest thing about the XDJ1000 is the brand new touchscreen that's got everyone talking. As far as I know, it's the first touchscreen that Pioneer have implemented on any of their DJ gear. It's quite a big screen, a little bit bigger than the CDJ2000 Nexus. It's much higher resolution and actually side by side with the 2000 Nexus, it actually makes the 2000 Nexus screen look a little bit rubbish. So uh, we've got, or dated I should say, the 2000 Nexus screen is actually still pretty good. So you can actually see that the layout here is quite similar to the physical layout of buttons on the CDJ2000 Nexus. So you can pick one of the XDJ1000s up, even if you've never used one before, and the layout will be fairly familiar to you. We've got the browse, tag, list, info, menu buttons across the top of the touchscreen, which is the same as the 2000 Nexus. 
and down the side we've got our connectivity options. Now obviously, as I said before, this does not support CD, so really the only options we've got here are USB link for playing tunes of other CDJs and also record box, which is connecting that to record box on a PC or another device to play tunes from. We've got the slip mode that's implemented here down in the corner. We've also got loop modes as well, and also sync, quantize, and um, pretty much the other menus are just about as similar. So if you hit browse, it obviously takes you to the browse menu where you can have a look at all the tracks, much the same as the 2000 Nexus. If you hold the browse button though, you get to search as indicated by the uh, little line and search underneath the browse button. And this is the most killer feature about the XDJ1000. It almost makes me uh, want to prefer this player to the 2000 Nexus. So you hold it and it's a full keyboard QWERTY search that's accessible from anywhere on the player. So many times in the club, I've been trying to find a particular track from a particular artist and I can't pull it up fast enough. And I was actually using Track to Scratch for about two or three years to achieve this because during a radio show, I could say, hey, I want this particular tune, search a massive library and get it straight away. Now you can do it natively on the CDJs and it's really, really easy. So if you want to look uh, uh, for a particular artist, we can type in Gamma and it's already built that playlist. And one thing is the responsiveness is really, really fast. I can get to whatever track I want really quickly. So let's hold search. I get to search, backspace. Let's have a look at, I want this Scott Brown tune that's on my key. Bam, that's, that tune is now loaded. So that is just, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best things that, and it's been implemented really, really well. And it's quite easy to type. So I can type fairly quickly, as I said, gamma, done and then I use the uh, traditional scroll wheel on the side here to browse up and down these menus. And then the track's loaded. So what we can do is press info. Obviously we've got the same information screen as the 2000 Nexus about that track. Hold it for link info. And then we can see that there is a CDJ2000 connected. Well, I know that there's a CDJ2000 Nexus connected and it's got a CD. So disc at player three, and that's the artist information. It's in the disc. So in the menu, so if we press menu, or we hold for utility, we've got a number of settings, pretty much all the same. The one thing that's new is the touch display calibration, because obviously you don't need that in the other players. So you press the X marks and it allows you to make sure that the, the uh, screen is calibrated correctly. I don't need to do that, obviously. And uh, we've got the LCD brightness, and you go pretty bright or pretty dark. Apart from that, it's pretty much the same as the 2000 Nexus. Browse, menu, load previous tracks, and that's pretty cool. So the one thing that you're probably looking at is in the top right hand corner is for this performance button. What is that? We didn't really see what that was in the demo. So we hit perform and we get this overlay here. So we've got beat jump and basically what that allows us to do is it allows us to do some sort of turntablism tricks. You know how people have sort of two vinyls and they have one vinyl that's one beat in front of the other and they can switch between that tune to make it sort of juggle and jump? We can do that now with this beat jump function. And it's quite uh, simple, I would say. So if we hit play, it works best on vocals. So we fast forward to a vocal. So it's like we've got the same tune and we're flicking between them. We can obviously do that with two or four beats. And that's pretty cool. And we can also use it with slip mode as well. So, so it returns to the place that we were. And it's really, really responsive. We've also got the hot cues here, so we can record a hot cue and, uh, oh, sorry, without sleep mode on. Record new hot cues. Bam. And hot cues C, I've actually set to be in a different track. So let's just mash between them. Yeah. 
And you can see there, it was actually miss, missing hitting B and C on the hotcues, not quite as responsive as having the physical buttons on the Nexus, which work all the time, every single time. So you're not gonna be doing too much really fast B juggling on this because when you start to go really, really crazy, it does miss a couple of button presses. But overall, it's implemented really well. If you wanna have perfect hotcues, you've obviously got the quantize function here. <laughs> And that will keep all your hot cue timings in complete time. So slip mode on, hit play. So it allows you to jump around pretty quickly. So it does a really good job. So let's take a quick look at some of the features that may not be obvious about the XDJ1000. Needle search is actually now built in to the screen here. So you can touch at any point on the waveform and just jump to that part of the track. Again, really responsive. It works really, really well. So one thing that came up in conversation is what happens if you're in a club that's kind of sweaty and kind of gross and you sweat on the CDJ or someone spills a drink on it. Does the touch screen go all crazy like it does on your phone and you can't press buttons and everything like that? Well, let's find out. I have a wet tissue here and I'm just gonna put it all over this touch screen, get quite a decent amount of water on there. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, yep, the water's pooling at the bottom there. Yep. Many people probably freaking out right now. Let's do some slip jumps. Needle jump. Oh, needle's locked. And that works perfectly, even though there is water all over the screen. And I'm gonna dry that now because I don't really want to. It's not gonna break because obviously you saw that the water pooled at the bottom. But yeah, still works perfectly fine, even if the CDJ is wet. So overall, what do we think about the Pioneer XDJ1000? I think when deciding what player you want to buy, you need to consider three things. The price of the player, the build quality of the player, and also the features of the player. When you look at all of those, I think out of Pioneer's entire CDJ or XDJ lineup, the XDJ1000, in my opinion, is the best one that Pioneer have made to date. The reason is this, for the cost. So this costs $1,350 Australian at the time of filming this, and the CDJ2000 Nexus costs $2,100. That's a pretty substantial difference. In terms of the build quality, the CDJ2000 Nexus is better, and the Pioneer XDJ1000 does feel a little bit on the cheap side. It is definitely a mid-level controller, However, I actually think this, this platter is better. It's a bit lighter, better for scratching, whereas the CDJ2000 is a little bit heavier. And also, the touchscreen kicks ass. It's got full keyboard QWERTY search, as I demonstrated earlier, and I love that feature so much, something that the CDJ2000 doesn't have. And also, this player has just about every single feature, plus more than the CDJ2000 Nexus. So, unless you really want the build quality and the more professional look of the 2000 Nexus, I'd be buying this one. And the screen's more high resolution. So, um, no one's playing CDs anymore. We're all using record box and USBs. I'm sure there's some out there that are using CDs, but yeah, as I said, in my opinion, this one's the way to go, definitely. I don't think that many clubs will be buying the XDJ1000 though, because I think they'll be paranoid about the touchscreen getting broken. It is really durable, as far as I can tell from my testing, and quite responsive, but people that play on Club Gear absolutely destroy it. They punch it and everything, so um, I don't really know if we'll be seeing many of those in clubs, but this is why Pioneer has aimed this as a more entry-level player to try and get it into the households, the smaller DJ setups, and I think it does an absolutely brilliant job of that. And to be honest, I'd buy this one if I had a choice out of all the Pioneer CDJ and XDJ lineup. So, 
Good work, Pioneer. Awesome player. Next DJ 1000. Check it out. Thank you.